So this is a sniper scope that I made for one of my tutorials on my channel the other day. If you haven't seen the tutorial, I recommend you go check it out if you want to be able to model this sniper scope right here from scratch with good topology, by the way. And on this sniper scope and on many other objects which you're going to encounter when you're 3D modeling, there are parts where you have some letters, markings, and numbers carved into the surface of the object, right? So for example, I have these numbers and markings here on this adjustment knob over here where the letters look like they've been carved into the surface. Now, I made them metallic just so you can see them a little bit more clearly. If I make them golden, they look pretty cute, okay? Of course, you can play around with this and you can accomplish all sorts of effects if you make it non-metallic. It's a little bit less obvious, but it's still there quite clearly. And I'm gonna show you how you can accomplish this effect today. Now, of course, these markings are just part of a texture. They're not actually modeled. They're not modeled with geometry, right? So you can maintain a relatively low poly surface while still having this sort of effect. And I have another example back here. On this adjustment knob, you can see the letters look like they've been carved into the surface. And I have this isolated underneath my scene as well, just so I can show you a little bit more clearly under this lighting. So clearly it looks like it's carved into the surface, but of course it isn't. It's just a little magic trick that I'm gonna show you today. So here's how you're gonna be able to create this. I'm gonna use this duplicate of this adjustment knob up here. It doesn't have any materials. If you want to follow along, just make yourself a little cylinder, which is shaped roughly like this one, okay? And just follow along, follow what I'm doing. So first, we're gonna take this object, we're gonna add a base material. So this is just gonna be the color of the base. Like you can see, this is black down here. We're gonna make this material black. You can make it whatever you want, but I'm gonna go with black. And you can make it metallic, you don't have to. We can get to that later, but whatever. So this is our base material, and now we're gonna have to create some custom texture maps which are going to control this effect. So you're gonna go over to some image editing program. I'm gonna use Canva because it's totally for free. If you go to Google, type in canva.com, you just make an account, you can do all sorts of texture edits and graphic designs and shit like that, totally for free. But you can use Photoshop, you can use PaintNet, whatever you want. This is just universal, so that's why I'm going with this so everybody can follow along. I'm gonna go up here to create, and we're gonna go to custom size, and you wanna have a pretty high resolution image for this if you want to see these letters from close up, which probably you do, because otherwise you wouldn't bother doing this shit, right? So we're gonna go 4096 width, and the height, let's say, 256 pixels generate a new design that's going to open up a new canvas for us now first we're going to have to make our background black so let's make the background black you click up here you change the color to whatever you want so this is the same color as on the base color on the object that we had a second ago and now we're going to have to create three different images the first image is going to be what's called a mask that's going to be a black and white image the white is going to be replaced with one material and the black is going to be replaced with another material then we're going to have to create a color map to determine the colors because you can see on our sniper scope here we got colored letters down here some are green some are red some are white and after that we're going to create our bump map or our height map so first let's add a text box right here we're going to use alt on this button right here so we can evenly scale it up let's do something like this and let's just type in something simple like one two three four five that's good enough for now okay type in whatever you want of course Let's also select everything and increase the letter spacing just so we can wrap it around our ring a little bit better. So we're going to make it something like this. Maybe I'll actually make them a little bit smaller. So I'll do 122 or something like that. And 123, 123, and 123. I'll add some more spaces between them. Okay, so we're going to place that in our middle. So this is going to be the first texture. This is going to be our mask. So that's ready to go. It's a black and white image. And just go up here to file, click on download. Click on download again. You download that shit to your computer. That's ready to go. I recommend you also save this to a new folder somewhere if you want to keep everything organized for your project. You probably want to have a separate folder just for this project so you can keep all your textures there because otherwise it's going to be messy all over the place on your fucking desktop when you're downloads folder. Anyway, that's one texture. And now we're going to make the second texture. So I'm just going to color these letters. I'll select the first two. Let's make them red. And let's also select the second two. I'll make those green all right again you can do whatever you want so this is our color map and we're going to download that separately once again so download download you can take this in your folder rename it so you can keep everything organized and then after that we're going to go to our downloads folder where we downloaded our first image okay and we're going to load that into this canvas right here so you're going to throw that in there this is the black and white text now you want to have an image of this you don't just want to take this text box right here and make that 
uh, and use that, you want to use your image because the image can have special effects. And we need special effects because we want to add some blur to these buttons, to these numbers. This is really important. So you click on this image and also make sure that it's completely aligned with your letters. You don't want this to be shifted. Everything has to be exactly in the same place. You click on that image, you go to edit up here and you go down to where you find blur and click on whole image and just add a little bit of blur. Let's make that 13% or something. Okay. And then once again, once we have this, just click on file, download, and download that to your computer as well. So that's ready to go now. Now we have our textures. Now here's how you apply them. Okay. So you go back to Blender. Let's switch over to our shading tab. This is our node right here. This is our basic material. For you, if you're using the default Blender setup, your node editor is going to be down here. I don't like that shit at all. It's I can't see nothing when I'm using my shader editor down here. So I just use this little menu to switch this stuff around and I save my default my default setup here so I can have it this way every single time. And this down here is also set to my UV editor because by default it's image editor. What am I going to do with an image editor that I can't do with a UV editor, but with the UV editor I can also edit my UV. So I don't want to do the switch every time I got to set to UV. So now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw in our first image, which for me is labeled with the number 20. This is going to be your mask. So let's just set up our UVs first. I'm going to go to my material preview. We're going to plug this into base color. Now for me, it's already kind of UV unwrapped because I was fucking with this before, but let me just mess it all up. So, so you can, uh, so you can see how I'm going to UV unwrap this properly. Hopefully this shit doesn't crash my fucking computer now that I unwrapped it with so many polygons. And of course it did. So to UV map this properly, we're going to click on this little menu. You're going to find your image. So mine is called number 20. So I'm just going to load that down here. And I have to make sure that this is displayed on the object properly. So right now you can see my object in this form. This is the map of my object. That's not going to work. I'm just going to move everything to a black area so that I don't accidentally get some of these markings somewhere where I don't want them. And then I'll take a couple of faces from around here somewhere like this. Alt right click, shift alt right click. I'll go to select, select loops, select boundary loop. That's going to leave only the outlines selected. And then I press control E mark C. And I also want to add another loop cut like this, Control E Mark Seam, so I can cut this. And that way I can go to face select mode. I can press L here. That's gonna select the entire ring. And I just press U, unwrap angle based. And that's going to unwrap this as a nice little strip down here. So all I gotta do now is rotate this by 90 degrees. I don't know why I didn't unwrap it over the entire image. It could have. I don't know why Blender couldn't figure this shit out, but whatever. We're gonna scale it up so it covers the entire object. Okay, and once you do that, then you're going to be able to see it on your model. So we also want to rotate it by 180. So we invert it. And now you want to play around with this. You want to scale it up and down to make sure that it matches correctly on this gap right here on the seam. So you want to move it around a little bit. You want to play around with it until it looks about right. So I'll scale mine up a little bit to increase the gap here to make sure everything is distributed a little bit more properly. But it doesn't really matter for now. Okay, just play around with it until it looks right. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Everything is displayed on the object properly. Okay. But this is going to be your mask. So this is going to control which material is going to be displayed. So we want to replace the black color with one material and the white color with another material. So we don't want this image texture plugged into the base color of this principal node. Instead, we're going to use shift a add a mix shader node right here. And this is going to combine two principal BSDF nodes. But this image texture right here is going to control how we're going to combine them. So you plug color into factor. And then you're going to duplicate this principled BSDF node with Shift D. You make the duplicate, I just make it white or red or whatever, and plug the first one into the first input and the second one into the second input in the mix shader node, and then plug the output into surface. And now you can see the black parts of the texture were replaced with this material, which of course we can make whatever we want, but we want that to be black, we want it to be metallic, we want it to be shiny, so reduce the roughness. And the second input here is going to be replaced with this image texture node, which we can make red, blue, metallic, non-metallic, again, whatever the hell you want. And in this principled BSDF node, we're now going to use our bump map, the blurry image that we just created. So now, of course, first we want to load in our color texture. So this is going to be the second image that we downloaded. We're going to bring that out here, plug color into base color. Now it's going to replace the base color that we had here, which was white with the colors of the image. So we have white, red, green. Okay, so now that's there. 
and then you have to use your bump map. So now we're going to bring in the blurry image, the third image. And you want to set that to non-color. So you want to change the color space from RGB to non-color because you don't want this to read the colors. You want it to read height information or something else from this image anyway. It's just going to process the image a little bit differently. And then Shift A, add a bump node, place that between this last image texture node and the second principal BSDF node. You're going to plug color into height and then normal into normal. Okay, and now, of course, for now, we can't see nothing because we got to increase the distance here a little bit by default to set the zero. You want to play around with these numbers a little bit. And now you're going to see that it looks like there are some bumps here. Now, more than likely, by default, it's going to be inverted. So it's going to be the wrong way around. So instead of look looking like they're carved into the surface, they're going to look like they're bumps on the surface. And we don't want that. If you want to test that, you just have to adjust your lighting properly so, so you can see everything a little bit better. So we're just going to lower it down here and see what's going on in my different lighting environment. And you can see that there is a light over there in the background. There's a light right here. Okay. And if we look very closely, that light is reflecting off of this side of the number two, which means there's a bump on that side. And then this side is in shade because it's covered by the left side. But it has to be the other way around. So the light has to be on this side. That would mean that it's reflecting the light from over there. And this should be shaded because it's inside covered by the surface. So that means we have to invert it. So all you got to do is select the surface, go to the bump node, click on invert. And now it's going inwards. And there you go. That's all you got to do. So you can turn up metallic. You can play around with your roughness. If you want to, you can do a whole bunch of other things. For example, we can add a hue saturation value node between the color map and the principal node. And that's going to allow us to make these colors a little bit darker if you want to reduce the value, for example, to let's say 0 0.1, or we can adjust the saturation, we can change the hue to completely change the colors to anything else. So there you go. This is how you make your carved letters when you're making objects like this, especially if you're doing something for a video game. Uh, for a video game, then you're going to need this type of shit because, of course, you don't want to have to carve this shit. It's going to give you a million polygons. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, join our Discord if you want to ask me a question. I'll see you guys in the next one.